Hey, Karumba people. I am exhausted. <laughs> In part because I'm getting older and it's just harder to sleep. When you get older, ask anybody who's older. Also, in part, because I just recently had a checkup and my medical provider says that the latest sleep aid I've been taking is also linked to the development of Alzheimer's, which is why I went on this drug because in the previous sleep aid I was on was supposedly also linked to Alzheimer's. Also, I took Ativan for 20 years, which is also apparently linked to Alzheimer's. I'm like, I don't care. You know what I mean? All I want to do is sleep, yo. I haven't been taking edibles, I haven't been taking cannabis, I've been recentering, following all the astrological shifts that have been happening. And the other reason I'm so exhausted is I'm paying attention to all of these protests. <laughs> you know, especially the ones that are happening in New York, at Columbia, at NYU. I see my former CUNY friends showing up in solidarity. I'm seeing my professors that I've worked with at NYU, at Columbia, um, everybody who taught me. And it's a lot, you know? I mean, it's also emotionally overwhelming because people really are risking their lives, you know, in support of justice or human rights or peace, whatever you want to call it, you know? I mean, I was watching Democracy Now! earlier, and I don't usually watch the news because I'm so sensitive to these energies. And of course, the news, they want us to keep watching. Democracy Now! is different, although still compulsive because I'm an information whore. But you know, I mean, journalists, Palestinian journalists, in particular, are being assassinated by the IDF. You know, there's a freedom flotilla that's going to attempt to break the siege on Gaza right now. Um, the last time that happened, they faced fierce uh, pushback, to say the least from the Israeli state and you know I'm seeing the most outrageous lies on counterparts to democracy now like Fox News Channel where today I saw an undergraduate student at Columbia self-identified as Jewish who said that protesters on their campus are saying that Jewish students at Columbia should be killed. That's not true. That is not true. Nobody is saying that. And in fact, the youngster paused before he said it, right? It was a telltale sign that he was lying. And that's the whole point, right? I need to keep saying this. Governments lie. That's why politics is a dirty game. I spent a cumulative six months in South Africa over the course of three years doing research for my dissertation on settler colonialism and racial capitalism and the way that liberal democracy, representative democracy, covers up for the ongoing reality of settler colonialism and racial capitalism. And I'm reading in these student newspapers such as the Harvard Crimson that settler colonialism isn't a real thing. 
right? Meanwhile, one of my former professors at Columbia, I got my PhD at the City University of New York Graduate Center, but we were allowed to take courses at other institutions through a partnership with these institutions. And I took a course with Professor Mahmoud Mamdani, who was a political prisoner in Uganda for speaking out and resisting colonialism. And I use his analysis around settler colonialism in particular as one of the key frameworks in my dissertation, which is linked just down below here on my YouTube channel. If you're seeing this on my Instagram page, you'll see that I just posted a video of Professor Mamdani speaking precisely about the operations of settler colonialism. This is outrageous. These attacks on long-standing intellectual movements, it's outrageous that these attacks on Palestinians continue not just in Gaza, but also in the West Bank, right? And everybody's so concerned about the safety of Jewish students without acknowledging the fact that there are Jewish students who are protesting the Israeli state. There are Jewish students in these encampments. There are Jewish students writing in these student newspapers against what's going on. And frankly, it doesn't make any sense. Six, seven years ago, right? When all of these students were saying we're sick to death of reading only white writers in our English classes. We're sick to death of reading only male theorists in our sociology classes. I'm just picking up ideas here, right? The right would call these kids snowflakes, right? That they couldn't handle the truth, right? They're the best defense against ideas you don't like is an offense, right? But an intellectual offense. The problem is there's been a huge dumbing down of society, right? I mean, just take Fox News. Maybe I'll link to it, maybe I won't, right? The anchor who interviewed that youngster spreading misinformation about the protests, the anchor couldn't even read the teleprompter correctly. <laughs> I mean, if you can't read the teleprompter correctly, what can you read? You know, and it's incredibly irritating And I feel obliged to speak out about it. But I cannot let it distract me from what I'm trying to do on this planet, right? Which is I'm trying to heal. I'm trying to survive. I'm trying to let go of the trauma that I have experienced in various ways my entire life because I'm gay, because I'm perceived as being effeminate, because I have long hair, even though every other motherfucker who presents as a male in Southern California has long hair, right? And everyone is getting their panties in a bunch because people are talking about resistance as a bona fide political practice, right? Because if you don't resist, what happens? The oppressor just keeps taking and taking and taking. 
But nobody's talking about all the violent rhetoric that's directed at supporters of Palestinians. I remember when I was involved in BDS activity back in the day. The pro-Israeli state apologists would call us Hamas sympathizers. I don't support Hamas. <laughs> Most Palestinians don't support Hamas. There's no option for them. It's either Hamas or it's the Palestinian Authority, which is corrupt as hell, as is Hamas, right? As is the Israeli state, right? And that's the final joke about this. I saw some idiot write a piece the other day saying that uh, the encampment in solidarity for Gaza at Columbia is basically the same as the Unite the Right rally that occurred in Charlottesville, Virginia several years ago, which again, bonkers, cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, right? Because Netanyahu is leading the most far right government, arguably in Israeli history. <laughs> and the students and faculty and other Columbia affiliates other Yale affiliates, other Harvard affiliates, other Berkeley affiliates are actually saying, not in our name. We reject fascism. We reject solving problems through violence. We reject the police because the police have a documented history of committing violent acts against black and brown and native peoples. <laughs> right? It was just four years ago that so many people in this country rose up to protest police brutality. And now the police have made a huge comeback out there in New York where a cop is the mayor. Out here in Southern California, the police are in disarray. There's a hiring shortage. Why? Because people don't want to fucking police other people. My experience out here is that people want to enjoy their lives, you know? And that's what I'm always trying to do even though it remains humid as fuck out here. Anyway, my friends, I gotta dash into this Capital One Cafe, right? Speaking about banks and finances and political economy to get some money because unfortunately, we still gotta use money, right?